We are live from West Banco Arena for the 2019 MEC Men's Basketball Tournament tonight. It'll be Wheeling Jesuit University taking on the number one seed and number five team in the country, your West Liberty Hilltoppers. Thank you for joining us on the West Liberty Sports Network. I am Todd Allum, joined by EJ Shodzinski. EJ, the last time these two teams played was not all that long ago. It was the last time West Liberty played. On March 2nd, the Toppers won by 11, 96-85 at the McDonough Center. Uh, West, well, Wheeling Jesuit played uh, West Virginia Wesleyan two days ago, uh, winning in the first round of the Mountain East Conference Tournament, 66 to 48 to get the chance to come and play the number one seed in the toppers. This is going to be a good one because it's those crosstown rivals here in Wheeling at West Banco Arena. And not only that, Todd, but we have seen Wheeling Jesuits improvement throughout the year. You know, it wasn't all that long ago that they were a one-win team, and they turned it on toward the end of the season. They've come into here with momentum. They were 2-17 and 17 at one point. They have won seven of their last ten to get into the conference tournament. Only ten teams make it in the Mountain East. It has 12 teams. Only ten make it. Wheeling Jesuit was able to fight back and coach John Peckinpah's first season with a lot of new players, a lot of young players, freshmen, in that starting lineup to come back and make it into the conference tournament is a huge deal and just an unbelievable job to end the season for Wheeling Jesuit. Yeah, it really is. But you know what? Looking back at that first game versus West Liberty, I was surprised at the talent level that Wheeling had. You know, I saw their record and I thought, boy, they're really going to be, you know, in a, in a rebuild. But that's not the case. They brought in good players. Unfortunately for them, they're just inexperienced players. That's right. There's a very bright future for Wheeling Jesuit, uh, just knowing how young this team really is. Well, the toppers come into this one, uh, winners of uh, quite a few in a row, four in a row after the loss at Char or, uh, at home against Charleston, 88-87, where they come into this one again, ranked number five in the nation, number one team in the conference. Uh, the winner of this ball game will move on to play Saturday and take on the winner of the game later on tonight between Charleston and Concord. Well, it's been a fun tournament so far. Maybe the most exciting game of this tournament, at, at men's and women's, was last night uh, between the Lady Toppers and Notre Dame College. The Lady Toppers pulled off a big victory to move on to the semifinals to take on Glenville State tomorrow at noon. But it was also the first victory, uh, conference tournament victory, for head coach Kyle Cooper in his second season. So a big congratulations to the women's team and Coach Cooper on his first ever tournament victory last night. Yeah, and even more significant was the fact that West Liberty really needed that win, I think, yesterday to, to solidify. Uh, excuse me, we almost got hit by a, a rolling ball here. To solidify their opportunity to play in the regional tournament. And in my opinion, I think they've done enough. But, you know, unfortunately, we don't make those decisions. But they're in a very good position to advance to the regional tournament with that win against Notre Dame. Well, the Hilltoppers in the regular season finished first overall, outright champions of the Mountain East Conference for the second straight year. Also, Dalton Bolin was named first team All-MEC, along with Eric Moninger, two West Liberty players making it this year. A player of the year came from Notre Dame. It was Will Voorhees, very well deserved. And also coach of the year came from Notre Dame and Coach Koenig. A uh, great job for him last year before he was injured, had some players leave the program as well. And to come back this year and have the season they had, uh, congratulations to Notre Dame. Making it on the second team for West Liberty, Will Yoakum, the freshman, uh, second team all MEC. He was also named freshman of the year, the second freshman of the year in a row for West Liberty. Last year, Dalton Bolden was the other one. Yeah, what an accomplishment. Who would have expected that at the beginning of the year? And the future certainly looks bright for him. And uh, and certainly for the Hilltoppers as, you know, some of these guys seem like they have been around forever, but West Liberty still a relatively young team. Yep. They start two freshmen, two sophomores. The only senior starter is Eric Meininger. Uh, speaking of the coach, though, Coach Ben Howlett, he has coached just 57 games as head coach of West Liberty in two seasons. He already has 50 wins. Coach uh, Crutchfield obviously held that record before previously at West Liberty it took him uh, 70 games to get it Ben did it in just 57 so a tremendous job for coach Howlett congratulations to him as well on that feat yeah what an amazing run and there were not a lot of people lining up for that job 
when Jim Crutchfield left, those were tough shoes to fill. Ben has certainly filled them, uh, and then some. Well, and it's going to be the national anthem coming up here at West Banco Arena. After that, we will have a little bit of a, an honor uh, for some of the players of the year and the players making it onto the all MEC teams during the regular season. So when we return, we will have some pregame festivities, then tip off from West Banco Arena at the Mountain East Conference Tournament on the West Liberty Sports Network. A&B Kia, the Valley's only total indoor showroom, is a proud sponsor of West Liberty Hilltopper Athletic Club. If it's cheering on the toppers or working to provide you with the best automotive shopping experience possible, A&B strives to be number one. Open seven days a week. A&B is the Valley's financing leader with the ability to say yes when other car dealers, banks, and credit unions have said no. Apply online at anbautosales.com. It's quick and easy with an answer within the hour. A&B, located directly off the Boggs Run Road exit in Benwood, West Virginia. A lifetime of saving starts here. Belmont Savings Bank focused on your future. At the Country Club Rehabilitation Campus, we provide a unique environment for your loved one to feel right at home. Our residents receive the freedom of living in an apartment or a personalized private suite with the care of our skilled nursing staff. A positive, healthy life starts with a good meal. We offer a full menu with fresh home-cooked food. Our skilled team of therapists design a customized rehab plan to increase residents' independence and ability to manage daily life skills at home. Experience the difference at Country Club Rehabilitation. Welcome back to West Banco Arena. They're honoring the players. Now I got my I get a little bit mixed up here. Uh, they honor Dalton Bolin and Eric Meininger. This is before the national anthem. Both for making the first team all MEC. Will Yoakum also uh, getting the trophy for being on the uh, second team all MEC and as well the freshman of the year. Topper Nation on their feet. Now the entire team comes out and will be awarded the trophy for the outright regular season Mountain East Conference champions. I'll get some pictures taken as well. And perfectly, Topper Nation right behind them in the stands, all on their feet. Yeah, really nice photo op. And you can see the Mountain East suspension bridge logo right at the half court uh, as well. Makes for a nice picture. And I absolutely love that logo from the Mountain East. Whoever designed that did a wonderful, wonderful job. I hope that becomes synonymous with this tournament year after year. Well, we will have the national anthem for you. We'll have it for you live as well. And this definitely gives it the big-time feel of this big arena and uh, the way they do it here at West Banco Arena, home of the Wheeling Nailers. So they are no strangers to this stood for the anthem taking a look around at the arena this crowd probably rivals some of those Wheeling Naylor crowds earlier in this season it really does I mean you could see from the uh, you know we're looking at the team benches and there's a very nice crowd behind the benches but actually behind us 
there's even a larger crowd in, and the majority of the upper uh, upper level is being filled up by this uh, local crowd. It's great to see. That is the best part of this, a local crowd for a great local game and a new local conference tournament. Well, we begin with the starters for Wheeling Jesuit. We, number two, Miguel Rodriguez, a six-foot senior from Brooklyn, New York. He's averaging six points a game. Number four, DeAndre Robinson, a 6'6 freshman from Monroeville, Alabama. He's averaging over 14 points and six rebounds. Number five, Steve Kennedy, a 6'1 freshman from Bowie, Maryland. He's averaging close to 12 points a game and almost four rebounds. Number 11, Frank Camgain, a 6'3 freshman from Kansas City, averaging 14 and a half points. And last but not least, number 24, Tariq Woody, a 6'8 freshman from Canton, Michigan, Averaging 12.7 points and 6.7 rebounds per game. Their head coach, John Peckinpah, in his first season as head coach of the Wheeling Jesuit Cardinals, gotten them to the number nine seed in the Mountain East Conference Tournament in his first year. Now, the number one seed and number five team in the nation, your West Liberty Hilltoppers. Number two, Yahil Hill, the six-foot freshman from Cleveland, Ohio. 12.6 points and two rebounds per game. Number three, Will Yoakum, the 6'5 freshman from Delaware, Ohio, Mountain East Conference Freshman of the Year, second team All-MEC, averaging 14.5 points per game. Number five, Dalton Bolin, a 6'4 sophomore from Janet Nutton, Ohio, 21.7 points a game and 6.6 .6 rebounds. Number 12, Luke Dyer, a 5'11 sophomore from Clarksburg, West Virginia, 5 points and 3 rebounds per game. Last but not least, the lone senior starter, the heart and soul of the Toppers team, Eric Meininger, number 33, the 6'5 senior from Centerville, Ohio, averaging 13.5 points and over seven rebounds per game. The head coach, Ben Howlett, again, we told you, 50-7 in, in his short two-year career. It took him 57 games to get to 50 wins, and he was the 2018 Coach of the Year in the Mountain East Conference. And he, I'm sure he was up for it again this year, but got beat out by the Notre Dame coach, Tim Koenig. Well, tip-off is almost set here. Will Yoakum versus Tariq Woody. Boy, if you're here, get the cameras out, because this is going to be a nice photo opportunity. Tip-off, Wheeling Jesuit, West Liberty, MEC Tournament at West Banco Arena. Wheeling Jesuit wins the opening tip. Go down loader to Reek Woody. Miningers there. Woody, no good. Rebounded by Will Yoakum. See what the toppers do in their first possession. It'll be Dyer at the top of the key. Hands it off to Miningers. He drives, throws it up. No good. Rebounded by Tariq Woody. And a pretty good job by Woody moving his feet and really forcing a tough shot by Miningers. Kennedy flies up the floor to get past the top of press. Cam Gain driving, dishes it back to Woody, looking for somebody. He finds Kennedy on the right side. Drifts to the middle. Now it's Robinson over the left side. Rodriguez puts up the three. No good. Rebounded by Eric Meininger. Quickly up the hill. He finds Meininger top of the key. Left side to Dyer. Pump fakes the three. Driving. Dishes over to the corner for Yahil Hill. Three-point shot a little bit too long. But an offensive rebound for Luke Dyer in the toppers. Yeah, the smallest guy in the court. He got up the highest that time. Inside pass, freshman to freshman. Hill to Yoakum, no good on the shot. Woody gets the rebound for Jesuit. Toppers pressing. Kennedy gets the ball across half court to Rodriguez. Downloader Woody back out to Robinson to the left side. For Cam Gain, his three, no good, long rebound. Bobbled around, Cam Gain comes up with it for Wheeling Jesuit. He drives on Meininger, shot. I don't know if Meininger got a piece of that or not, but it's no good. Meininger in transition, bounce pass to Bolin. Three-point shot is up from the corner. It's good. First points of the game, three-nothing toppers. And a great look by Meininger. Found Bolin all alone in the corner, and you know that he knows what to do with that. Rodriguez trying to beat the topper press. He does get across half court. Man-to-man -man defense, Hill on him. Now it's to the right side to Cam Gain. Luke Dyer guarding him down little Woody. And Spinninger double team back out to Cam Gain. Left side now to Kennedy. Bolin in his face. Now back to the right. 
Rodriguez looking, three to shoot, gets into the paint, shot is up, no good, Bolin with the board. Dyer quickly up to Hill, he goes baseline, dishes it back out to Yoakum, puts up a long two, this one is off, offensive rebound for the toppers, cross court pass, Dyer, Moninger, three point shot, no good, off the top of the backboard, it's loose, out of bounds, possession stays with the toppers, they say last off of Robinson. And another great job by Dyer. That's his second offensive rebound at just the start of this game. Luke is one of those do-everything kind of players for the toppers at point guard. Lobs it into Will Yoakum on the inbound. Now it's Meininger, top of the key. Left side to Bolin, pumps. Spinning, loses the ball, goes right to Meininger. He spins. He gets his shot blocked by Tariq Woody. Great defensive play. Yeah, it really was. You know, Woody showed the ability here to have a little bit of quickness and uh, came up with the block that time. Kennedy off to the right side. No shot from Rodriguez. He brings it back to the top of the key. Now it's Cam Gain on the left. Finds Woody. He puts up a long three-point shot. It's good. Tie ball game at three. With Dyer. Finding her top of the key for the toppers. Dyer now. Back to Mininger on the right. Bolin. Tries to go to him, gets this pass stolen away by Cam Gain, and he finishes at the other end. Jesuit with the early lead, 5-3. to three. Yeah, great quickness by Cam Gain. He got in the passing lane and made the steal. Liberty again, back quickly down the floor. Bolin keeps this one, goes baseline, puts up the shot, no good, but he is fouled. He will shoot two. They give this to DeAndre Robinson, his first team first. You know, so here we are at the 16-11 mark, and the score is 5-3. to three. You know, you, you've got to wonder, playing in this big facility for the first time, if it, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to for these teams, but I expect them to heat up as the game goes on. Bolin makes his first, the second platoon coming in for the toppers. Evan French will wait as he'll be subbed in for Dalton. End of the game. Brady Arnold, Tyler Primer, Nate Allen, and Marlon Moore. And Evan French waiting to come in if Bolin can make this. No good. And the rebound is up. Nate Allen gets it for the toppers. Brady Arnold for three. It's good. 7-5. Toppers take the lead back. And you really can't say enough about West Liberty's rebounding prowess. That's their third extra possession in the early going. Cam Gain takes it coast to coast and makes the buckets. Tie ball game at seven. Bolden baseline loses this. They call another foul on Weaving Jesuit. This one goes to Tariq Woody. Bolden back for a second attempt at the line. You know, and that'll be key for Willing Jesuit. If Woody gets in any kind of foul trouble, you know, that really limits a lot of the things that they can do. That'll be Woody's first, team second on Jesuit. Bolden cannot get the first of two. Woody comes out in number 23, Emmanuel Ansong. Ansong, a 6'4 freshman from Bordentown, New Jersey. He averages 7.5 points, 4.5 rebounds. Bolin makes the second, so one of two on both, two of four so far in the game. Evan French into the ball game for the toppers. And we'll have to keep an eye on Ansong for Wheeling Jesuit. In the last game, which was just a week ago, he really did an incredible job offensive rebounding. West Liberty's got to check him out. Jesuit speeds down the floor with Steve Kennedy. Cam Gain on the right side. Now Ansong top of the key over to the left. Well, Kennedy now back to the right side. Rodriguez. A dozen seconds to shoot for Wheeling Jesuit. Cam Kennedy will drive on Evan French. Uses the speed. Dishes it back out for Robinson. Three-point shot. No good. French with the rebound. He brings the ball up. Brady Arnold now. Finds Marlon Moore on the right. Now it's Primer, top of the key. He'll drive on Robinson, spinning into the lane. Pumps, throws it up. Rolls around and falls. 10-7, to seven, toppers lead. Yeah, nice spin move by Primer. He used his body. Made the easy shot. Kennedy over to the left side to Rodriguez. Go down low to Robinson, guarded by Brady Arnold. Mismatch height-wise, and Robinson wins that battle. Makes it a one-point game, 10-9. to nine. And Robinson's going to win that battle against most everybody. He's long and lean inside, and he's easy uh, easy to finish in there. 
Arnold for another three off the front of the rim. Offensive board for Evan French, and the putback is good. 12-9, toppers lead. Timeout called. With that stoppage in play, it will be a media timeout. We will take the break as well. Toppers lead 12-9, 14-25, left to play on the West Liberty Sports Network. Your business keeps you busy all day. You need to save time and money. Main Street understands, so we offer convenient service and advice. Maybe that's why we keep growing. We have business checking, the absolute lowest fees, and savings with higher interest rates. Locally owned with local decision makers. Built by the people, for the people. We don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. Main Street Bank. Welcome to the top early point lead here at West Banco Arena taking on the crosstown rival Wheeling Jesuit. Wheeling Jesuit made four of their last five field. So it is, you know, been a great game so far, a great opening to this game for a hometown crowd for both teams. Yeah, absolutely. And West Liberty not shooting that well, but the thing that's really carried them is their offensive rebounding. You know, by my count, which is unofficial, I already have the Hilltoppers for four offensive rebounds. And uh, those extra, extra possessions are really important in a game like this. We get the stats sent to us, and you're pretty close. It's The Toppers have 10 rebounds already, five defensive, five offensive for the Toppers. But both teams, uh, four of 10 for Weaving Jesuit, four of 11 for the Toppers. But, you know, they're keeping pace right with each other. And that rebounding has really been... You know, to, to a lot of people, it probably goes unnoticed because West Liberty is not a big team, but all these guys can rebound, and they're showing it here again tonight. Both teams back on the floor. The toppers set to put on the press here with their second group. Into the ball game for Weaving Jesuit, number 13, Jay Gentry. Weaving Jesuit will beat the press. Gail Rodriguez, the player taking a breather for Wheeling Jesuit as Gentry comes in. Can gain on the left. Trying to size up. Tyler Primer gets into the lane, launches it no good. But an offensive board for Ansong, and the putback goes. Yeah, there's that guy that we talked about, and if you don't check him out, he's going to make you pay, and he did that right there. Brady Arnold now, top of the key. Keep this ball, now gets it off to Evan French. Over to the right to Nate Allen. He's looking, just to the top of the key, drives, puts it up in the low post, no good, but he's fouled by Ansong, and Nate will shoot two. Nate picking up his strong play, nice drive there, and he got, he got Ansong off his feet, and he cracked into him, and now he's gonna go to the line for two. Topper starting five, set to come back into this ball game. Allen cannot make the first. Stays a one-point game with 12 to 11. Will Yoakum will wait at the scorer's table for Nate Allen to come in as the rest of the starting five comes in for West Liberty. Allen, a 59% free throw shooter this season. Tariq Woody back in for DeAndre Robinson for Wheeling Jesuit. Allen cannot get the second either. 0 for 2 on that trip to the line. Toppers will still press out of this. Now they back off, and Kennedy brings the ball up the floor. Yeah, foul shooting has been an issue so far for West Liberty, missing a lot more shots than what we're used to seeing, and I think it's because of the facility. West Liberty just 2 of 6 from the free throw line so far. Kennedy driving. Nice little move on Luke Dyer. He gets the bucket, and Wheeling Jesuit has the one-point lead, 13-12. to 12. And You can see the potential in Kennedy. He's going to be a good one, only a freshman. Hill for three. No good offensive rebound for Nate Allen, and a foul called on West Liberty. They will give this to Eric Meininger in that fight for the rebound. Will Yoakum comes back in for Nate Allen. That'll be Miningers first, team first. That was a tough one to see from our angle. It looked like a collision between Miningers and Woody, and you know that's a good collision. Yeah. Uh, Miningers gets the call that time. 
Stoppers will press. Hill Hill trying to stay with Steve Kennedy. They do get it up to Ansong. Now it's on the left side to Cam Gain. Pump fakes the three. Willie Yoakum staying with him. They go around the horn. Jay Gentry now on the right, driving into the paint. Back out to Ansong. Back to Gentry for three. Straight away, no good. Long rebound to Tariq Woody. Offensive board for Jesuit. Gentry again on the right. Now left side to Kennedy. He brings it to the top of the key. Can unloaded Woody. One-on-one -on -one with Meininger. No good, but the putback falls. Song. Out West Liberty. Giving Jesuit leads 15 to 12. Just a 30-second timeout. And Song's one of those guys that he knows where his bread's buttered. You know, his game is offensive rebounding him. You know, whoever gets that matchup for West Liberty, they've got to know that's the only thing he's concerned about. <laughs> he doesn't care about shooting jumpers. He doesn't care about driving. He's going to the glass. He's hurt him twice already. you got to check him out. The toppers have not scored the last two minutes, eight seconds. Wheeling Jesuit on a 6-0 run. The last minute, 43. Toppers just four of 12 so far. Two of six from behind the arc and two of six from the not, from the line as well. Wheeling Jesuit, 7 of 16 from the floor. Just one three-pointer, 1 of 5. No free throw attempts yet for the Cardinals. Mining her a deep three, too long. The ball is tipped around. Kennedy comes up with it with speed and loses it to Ansong. Loses it back to Camgain. Puts up the three-pointer. No good. Luther comes down with another rebound. The one that's evident is these rebounds really go far. Now another steal for Cam Gain. He goes the distance and gets the bucket 17-12. Wheeling Jesuit leads. Hill Hill hands this one off. Now it's Moninger. Pumps the three. Looking to his right. Finds Bolin. Now it's Hill Hill on the left side. He'll drive. Lays it in. But it's going to be blocked by Emmanuel Ansong. Back comes Jay Gentry. Frank Camgain to the top of the key, right side to Gentry, back to Camgain. Now it's Kennedy on the left, mismatch with Moninger, gets to the paint, bounce pass to Woody, stolen away by Moninger and Dalton Bolden, three on one, Moninger keeps it himself, he gets fouled by Camgain, and Eric will shoot two, 14th foul on Wheeling Jesuit, first on Camgain. Really unique skill set for Meininger. There aren't many five men in this league that can steal the ball at one end, and take it 94 feet and get fouled and go to the line. First one is good for Meininger. He's 84% on the season. Jay Gentry will take a seat as Miguel Rodriguez, number two, back into the ball game. It's a four-point game, 17-13. Meininger cannot make the second. And Song with the rebound for Jesuit. 11 minutes left to play in this first half. Toppers pressing. And Song gets across half court. Cam Gain puts it up and good with the contact. Boy, he really did absorb that contact. And Cam Gain's a nice looking guard. Very strong. Has the body of an upperclassman. Bolin's D3, no good. Steve Kennedy with the rebound for Wheeling Jesuit. Up the floor quickly. And Song looking. Offensive foul, the charge. Dalton Bolin draws it. Yeah, and boy, did that come at the right time. Jesuits seem to have momentum. I like the way Bolin took that charge, and more importantly, that's the second foul on Ansong, and he's going to have to take a seat. He will take a seat. He's back into the game. DeAndre Robinson, number four. Brady Arnold. And Marlon Moore into the ball game for Eric Meininger and Yahil Hill. Arnold quickly drives baseline, throws it up with contact, no good. Rebound is loose. Will Yoakum comes up with it. He throws up the little jumper, and it falls. 19-15, Wheeling Jesuit leads. Yeah, and once again, an offensive rebound. Keep pretty in the game. Cam game. We up to Woody, no good. The put back either. Ball is loose. Possession stays with Wheeling Jesuit. Well, I'll tell you, you know, people were calling for, uh, you know, body contact down there, but Woody's got to finish that. You know, he's uh, he's 6'7 and a, and a big body, and he's two feet from the basket. 
Uh, he's got to lay that one home. Kennedy down low to Woody. They're going to call the foul on Luke Dyers. He tried to go for the steal. The topper crowd saying he got all ball. The officials disagree. That'll be the first on Dyer. Well, and I would say that Woody got away with one there because as a big guy, you never want to bring the ball down on the floor where the little guys are. Uh, normally, they're going to come up with that. Halfway through this first half, just under 10 minutes left to play. Inside to Kennedy, wide open. Great pass from Woody to Kennedy, who extends their lead to 6. 21-15, Wheeling Jesuit. Yeah, Woody's showing his passing ability there. Yoakum dishes it back to Marlon Moore. He's looking, hands it off to Dyer. Now it's Will Yoakum again, pump fakes the three. He's going to drive, lays it up. It's good, and one opportunity coming up for Will Yoakum. Yeah, I like that. I think West Liberty needs to do a little bit more of that, driving the ball to the basket. As you can see, and everyone can see in the facility, these rims down here, they have not been broken in yet, and the ball's coming off hard. Well, with that stoppage of play, it's going to be immediate timeout. 21-17, Wheeling Jesuit leads, 9.33 left in the first. Will Yoakum shooting an and one when we return on the West Liberty Sports Network. Undo's Catering, family owned since 1953. With newly remodeled catering facilities throughout the Ohio Valley, Undo's can accommodate banquets from 25 to 700 guests. Undo's caters weddings, picnics, corporate events, holiday events, and job site drop-offs for the construction and oil and gas industry. Call 304-233-5566 today. Back to West Banco Arena, 933 left in this first half. Wheeling Jesuit up by four, 21-17. Got an early lead here. It's pretty close to a packed house here at West Banco Arena. A very good crowd here from the hometown. Yeah, really exciting to see. And uh, they're even starting to fill in right now in the end zones. Yeah. Uh, with that being said, you know, the Hilltoppers are off to, off to a slow shooting start. Six for 18, 33%. It'll take them a while to get used to the facility, but I would expect that shooting percentage to go up as the game goes on. They probably should have talked to Morgan Bruner before yeah. the game because she didn't have any problem down here, did she? <laughs> Not at all. Morgan Bruner tied a Mountain East Conference tournament record with eight three-pointers in the game last night for the Lady Toppers. Yoakum converts his and one, makes it 21-18. Morgan Bruner... Again, a tremendous night for the Lady Toppers last night in Coach Kyle Cooper's first ever Mountain East Conference tournament victory. Toppers pressing. Wheeling Jesuit finally gets it across with three seconds to spare. Kennedy will slow things down in the half court. Woody to the right side to Frank Camgain. He drives baseline. Shot no good. Now the whistle. Call a foul on the Toppers. This one goes against Will Yoakum. will be his first, team third. They'll send Frank Camgain to the line to shoot two. Nice drive by Camgain. You know, like we saw this guy, he doesn't look like a freshman. You know, he looks like uh, he's been in the weight room all his life, and uh, that time he was able to get a little contact and get to the foul line. Eric Meininger will come in for Will Yoakum. He's got some blood on his elbow, so Eric is in. Cam Gain makes his first free throw, 22-18. Wheeling Jesuit leads. Makes the second as well, make it 23-18. Wheeling Jesuit. Hill brings the ball up the floor for the toppers. Meininger puts up a three. It's good. Two-point ball game. 23-21, Meininger with four points. Robinson up to Kennedy, toppers pressing. Rodriguez gets across half court. He's going to go baseline, keeps, dishes it back out. And now Kennedy, he gets into the paint, uses his speed. Good. Great defense by Brady. 
Yeah, can, uh, you know, Wheeling Jesuit wanting it, getting it. Mid for no good for you, Hill Hill. The rebound, and they're going to Hill stepped on the line, on the baseline, as he tried to save that ball. Possession goes to Wheeling Jesuit. Brady Arnold comes back out as Luke Dyer re-enters the game for the Toppers. Toppers pressing. Kennedy brings it back across the floor, picks up his dribble. Now it's Rodriguez spinning back around to Kennedy, and they just get across the line with a half a second to spare. DeAndre Robinson for three, too long. Dyer with the board. Yeah, and the pressure did not force the turnover, but it did force a quick shot. Boninger's pass was tipped. Bolin picks up the loose ball, misses the shot. Rebounded by Cam Game, quickly up to Rodriguez. Left side to Kennedy, open for three. Well off, air balled, out of bounds. Possession goes back to West Liberty. And Kennedy missed that one by quite a few feet. Uh, but you can see the depth perception, you know, is different for these guys out here. And uh, I'd like to see West Liberty take the ball to the basket. A little bit more than what they've done so far. 7.50 left in this opening half. Dyer to Bolin on the right side. Cam game in his face. Driving into the paint. Throws it up with the left hand. He's fouled. Who are they going to give this one to? It'll be Cam Gain. His second. And West Liberty now into the bonus. It's the seventh team foul on Wheeling Jesuits. It looked like Dalton and I are thinking the same thing there. You know, really nice strong move to the middle. Drew the foul, and he made the first foul shot. Jay Gentry in for Frank Cam game for Wheeling Jesuit. Will Yoakum set to come in for Dalton Bolin. Bolin one of two on that trip. Woody with the rebound. Rodriguez to Robinson to cross half court. Kennedy down low to Woody, one-on-one -on -one with Boninger. Shots no good. Fight for the rebound. A few toppers there on the floor. Woody picks it up with his foot on the baseline. Toppers get possession. And Woody has missed several of those bunnies down there. He's working hard. He's getting good position, but not able to finish uh, when he needs to. Yoakum into the ball game for Bolin. Tyler Primer comes to the scores table as well. Moninger top of the key, inside pass goes off the head of Kennedy to Luke Dyer, back to Moninger, and the finish, Toppers lead 24-23. Yeah, it was like a header in soccer, you know, the ball, <laughs> ball bounced up in the air right to Dyer, who assisted back to Moninger. DeAndre Robinson will drive. Ball is loose, but right to Tariq Woody. Marlon Moore with the block on Woody, here comes Jahil Hill. Bounces the ball off his knee and out of bounds. Possession goes back to Wheeling Jesuit. Tyler Primer in for Marlon Moore. Jeremiah April, the seven-foot junior, number 25 for Wheeling Jesuit, in for Tariq Woody. April from Phoenix, Arizona, averaging three and a half points and three and a half rebounds. Dyer tips this pass, but it goes right to Kennedy, and they call the foul on Luke Dyer. Topper Nation not happy with the call. And Luke came just within an inch of stealing that pass, but in this game, you know, an inch is as good as a mile, yeah. and Dyer picks up the uh, picks up the personal. 6.40 left to play in this opening half. Kennedy goes to the left side. Rodriguez with it. Hill Hill there makes a nice move. Nice pass inside to Kennedy. He was left all alone. Jeremiah April found him. You know, that's the second time that Kennedy has been able to shake free for an easy bucket. Will Yoakum top of the key. Left side to Primer. He'll drive baseline. Puts up the reverse layup. No good. Offensive board for Yoakum. The putback, no good. Ball is still loose. Rodriguez comes up with it for Jesuits. One on three. He throws it up over the backboard. And the shot is no good. Back to West Liberty. Yeah, kind of a wild shot there by Rodriguez. I think he was trying to draw the foul. But, you know, you, if you're at home and you can't <laughs> see it, the ball almost hit the shot clock on top of the basket. 
Brady Arnold in for you. Hill Hill for the toppers. Six minutes left in the first. Finding her top of the key. Thought about the three-point shot. Back to Brady Arnold. He gets into the paint, hands it off to Dyer. He drives. No good, but fouled by Jay Gentry. And all four of the toppers on the floor rush over to help Luke up. Yeah, that's always a good sign. That shows everybody's in the game. And he took a pretty good uh, hard fall right there. There, you know, there's a there's a layer of cushion underneath this uh, underneath the wood floor, and it it gives off a little bit of an echo. Cannot hit the first one. The toppers still continue their struggles at the free throw line. Second one is good though. The toppers tie this ball game up at 25. 5:49 left. Pass up to Kennedy again, using his speed to beat the press. April shot is blocked from behind by Tyler Primer, the seven-footer. Yoakum to Arnold in transition. Three-pointer off. But a long rebound to Will Yoakum, the topper's chance. He's so good. Ball is loose, out of bounds. Possession with the toppers off of Wheeling Jesuits. And lots of hard battles won inside there by West Liberty. Once again, getting another possession. Dyer will throw this one in, finds Primer, easily gets the buckets, beating DeAndre Robinson, 27-25. And Primer really showed his hand strength there, able to corral that ball that was, it was a fastball coming yeah. at him. Quickly up for Gentry on the left side, he slows it down. Hand off to Rodriguez, Arnold almost gets the steal, but DeAndre Robinson gets it back to Rodriguez, open for three, off the front of the rim, and now it's Will Yoakum. Yoakum through the lane. No good. Meininger with the offensive board. It's loose now. Rodriguez has it. He will slow it down as he crosses half court. Kennedy. Now it's back to Rodriguez on the right. 13 to shoot for Wheeling Jesuit. Gentry pumps the three. Goes baseline. Keeps the ball. Now it's Kennedy coming the opposite way on the baseline. April, the mid-range jumper, the seven-footer, no good. Rebounded by Will Yoakum. Yeah, that shot didn't look good by April right there. I think it was a little bit out of his range. Primer finds Meininger for three. It's good. The senior drills it. Toppers up by five, 30-25. Conversely, that was definitely in Meininger's range. I reminded you of a... Uh, a few nights ago against Notre Dame College in the buzzer-beating shot that won the game for Eric Meininger and the Hilltoppers in their maybe the final game of the year in the ASRC. Yeah, what an exciting play that was. DeAndre Robinson, a nice play for Wheeling Jesuit, gets the bucket, 30-27. Meininger, another three. This one no good. Kennedy skies for the rebound. Toppers pressing. He lobs it up for Rodriguez to beat the press. Rodriguez was open, but decided against shooting that three-point shot again. Gentry at the top of the key will drive on Brady Arnold. Lobs it up on the floater. No good. Gets the offensive board, though. Back to Rodriguez. Kennedy dishes it back to Rodriguez. Now it's Robinson to Gentry on the left side. Now it's Kennedy on the right again. Primer in his face. The three-pointer, no good. Rebounded by Meininger. Three minutes left in the opening half. Dyer hands it off to Yoakum. Thought about the straightaway three. Got Robinson off his feet. Nice bounce pass to Meininger under the bucket. Back to Yoakum for three. It's good. 33-27, toppers lead. Steal by Dyer. Three-pointer, no good. Right to Brady Arnold. The putback is... 35 27 toppers open up an eight point lead yeah, and if you're willing jesuit you got to be thinking timeout right here as west liberty gets their first run of the game kennedy to gentry to beat the press 225 left rodriguez to april back over to gentry a steal by yoke on the ball is loose though all the way back down the other end of the floor. Gentry behind the back pass to Meininger. It's good, and one coming up for Eric Meininger. Boy, what a finish by him. He absorbed a lot of contact right there. Put it up with his left hand and kissed it home. 
And a tough one there for Jay Gentry. He's trying to save the ball. His pass went right to Eric Meininger of West Liberty. And the toppers lead this one by 10 now, 37-27. He will take immediate timeout and be right back on the West Liberty Sports Network. A&B Kia, the Valley's only total indoor showroom, is a proud sponsor of West Liberty Hilltopper Athletic Club. If it's cheering on the toppers or working to provide you with the best automotive shopping experience possible, A&B strives to be number one. Open seven days a week, A&B is the Valley's financing leader with the ability to say yes when other car dealers, banks, and credit unions have said no. Apply online at anbautosales.com. It's quick and easy with an answer within the hour. A&B, located directly off the Boggs Run Road exit in Benwood, West Virginia. Welcome back to West Banco Arena. 2-10 left in this opening half. The Toppers went on a run and just opened up a 10-point lead, 37-27. West Liberty, a 7-0 run in the last 36 seconds, a 13-2 run in the last 3 minutes and 40 seconds. Wheeling Jesuit just one of their last seven field goals. Yeah, and these runs are often the result of good defense. West Liberty able to create turnovers, which has led to easy baskets forcing Willing Jesuit to call a timeout. You know, I think I think they were a little bit late with the timeout. I would have called it maybe a possession earlier. Uh, with that being said, West Liberty opens up a 37-27 to lead. The five on the floor for the toppers, Yoakum, Hill, Moninger, who's shooting the and one, Primer, and Bolin. We think Jesuit, it's Kennedy, Gentry, Robinson, Rodriguez, and Woody. Moningers and one attempt, quickly up and good. 38-27, toppers lead by 11. Now the officials blow the whistle. Marlon Moore into the ball game for Eric Moninger. And I like the way Ben substitutes players on foul shots. It enables him to set up his pressure, which we're seeing right now. Kennedy picks up his dribble. He's trapped in the corner now. The topper smartly just trying to guard anybody. They get it up quickly to Gentry, and he beats the press by a couple seconds. Under two left to play. Robinson on the right side. Three-pointer no good. Primer the board for the toppers. And right now, Wheeling Jesuit is settling for those long three-pointers. You can see it's not working for them, and I would give them the same advice. They try to take the ball to the basket a little bit. Bolin takes the handoff from Hill. No good on the three, but an offensive board for Primer. Back to you, Hill Hill. 135 left. Yoakum, three-point shot is good. 41-27, toppers lead. And once again, it's led by a, uh, oh boy. And the reason I said, oh boy, is Wheeling Jesuit really made a tough inbound pass. And let their player Rodriguez in a tough spot and it looked like Yoakum set him up for the charge. Unfortunately for the Hilltoppers, it was called a block on the floor, so it'll be Wheeling's ball out of bounds. That's a tough one. I got to watch myself. That happened right in front of us. I don't want to upset the officials. That was an oh boy right there. <laughs> yes, it was. Folks at home, you know what an oh boy is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 115 left in this opening half. Wheeling Jesuit with the ball. They gave the foul to Will Yoakum. Will will take a seat. Marlon Moore back into this ball game. Rodriguez on the left side. I'm sorry, Eric Meininger back into the ball game for the toppers for Yoakum. Gentry with two to shoot on the shot clock. Nobody's paying attention. Robinson finally just lobs it up off the backboard. No good. Bolin comes back for the toppers. Going to keep it himself. Throws it up. Rolls around. No good. Woody tips it back. And he ends up with it. 40 seconds left in the half. Kennedy quickly gets down the floor and finishes 41 to 29. The toppers will get the last shot. Shot clock is off. Moninger will bring this ball up the floor. You know, I love the way Ben's always thinking. That shot went in for Wheeling Jesuit. About 33 seconds left. He deliberately held the ball out of bounds, did not inbound it until the shot clock was turned off. I mean, those are little things that help you to win games. Mining on the right elbow, dishes it over to the left side for Bolin. Mid-range jumper, it's good with three seconds left. And time will run out. Toppers lead at halftime, 
29, Topper Nation on their feet. Boy, what great execution there by Bolin and West Liberty. Able to get the last shot. It was a pretty one from the baseline, and West Liberty goes in 43-29. to 29. The Toppers a 13-2 run the last two minutes and 45 seconds of this first half. Well, when we come back, we will bring you some halftime stats, team and individually. We return for more on the West Liberty Sports Network. Hi, my name is Cody Wagner. I'm a criminal justice major here at West Liberty University. I'm going to show you what it's like to be a student in this program. Now we're going to go to my victims of crime class with Dr. Bell. What we're going to do is we just talked about chapter six, which was the child maltreatment, child abuse, child neglect. The CJ program really focuses on all the different aspects of criminal justice, as in corrections, law enforcement, and law. Dr. Bell has the networking capabilities to be able to help propel you into the criminal justice system in whatever which way you want to go, which makes it a little bit more unique compared to just somebody running the program out of a book. So uh, sometimes during my free time, I like to come out and throw a football on the quad with my friends. You can use your bachelor's to go on to grad school, so you can go in here into the graduate program of criminology, or you can just use your bachelor's to enter into the criminal justice field in terms of law enforcement. Uh, for me, I'm using my criminal justice bachelor's to go to law school. Hi, now we're gonna go to my internship with the Ohio County Courthouse. Uh, this semester I'm doing an internship at the Ohio County Prosecuting Office. Everyone in the criminal justice major is required to do a 200 hour internship. It's nice that I have the opportunity to do an internship through the school that will prepare me for the exact field that I plan on entering after graduating. Being at the internship has showed me what it's like to be an attorney more than what you see on TV. Um, going to court is the fun side. You don't really see all the detailed paperwork that you have to go through and all the work that they really put in behind the scenes. So um, really, the internship's just sparking more of my curiosity to get more involved. Now uh, we're at the Fido House. I like to just hang out here and play video games with my brothers. I'm president of Fido the Theta on campus. Uh, we're an international fraternity that strives on um, business as well as social aspects. We really try to take in our members and help create them into the best versions of themselves. Whenever I joined, I wasn't really doing so hot in my academics. I wasn't very social. I instantly gained a whole new network of friends. So uh, tonight we're hosting our bid dinner for all the new recruits for Fight Out. Well, I, uh, I transferred to West Liberty my freshman year. I really liked the campus life. I noticed that it was a little bit different than what I had been experiencing. Uh, the students were really active, uh, engaging one another. There was a lot of different clubs and organizations, including Greek Life. My GPA uh, instantly rose to a 4.0. I became more involved. I joined student government. I joined Greek Life. Uh, now I'm the president of my fraternity. So it's really helped me uh, grow as a person transferring here. Hopefully this gave you a look at what it's like to be a student at West Liberty University. For more information on the criminal justice program, check out the website.
guys, my name is Colin Lewis. I'm from Martinsburg, West Virginia. I'm a student here in the athletic training program at West Liberty. And today I'm going to take you to see what it looks like to be a student in this program. Right now I'm getting ice for uh, Zach. He's a defensive tackle for West Liberty's football team. Um, and he received a knee injury. Uh, so to treat this, we're going to give him a little bit of ice while he sits in class um, to uh, help stop or slow down the inflammation process and also to help with his pain. He's been having a lot of pain recently. So. Now we're going to go check out our orthopedic evaluation of upper extremities class with uh, Dr. Hannah. You guys remember we're talking about the upper extremity and <clears throat> the special test obviously. Today we're going to work on the valgus varus test of the uh, elbow. The medial upper condyle, the humerus, the lateral upper condyle, those are the common origin points but those muscles run long, long bellies down across the wrist to flex and stand, obviously ulnar and radial deviate. Okay? Check out my modifications of exercise class. Today we're going to cover a specific type of cancer. There are four primary types or classifications. So we're going to start in on carcinoma. Professors are amazing here at Westlib. They really care about how much you learn, how much you, how much experience you're gaining through the program. Clinical experience is just um, all around amazing. Uh, you get to work with the football teams, you get to work with the basketball teams, you get to go off campus, work with PT clinics, doctors, hospitals. Now outside of class, I'm a student ambassador. I'm about to give a tour right now, so let's go meet the family. Hey guys, I'm Colin Lewis. I called for you guys today. How's it going? I'm also the president of Alpha and Omega Men's Bible Study. I hope this gave you a look at what it's like to be in the athletic training program. For more information, please visit our website. I'm Lauren and I'm a broadcasting major at West Liberty and today we're going to show you what it's like to be in the program. Now I'm on my way to my news writing and reporting class with Professor Beagle. But first and foremost, our mission here is to inform. Reporters tell folks what's going on <coughs> in the world around them. West Liberty was a really small school in a really nice area, but not too far away from Wheeling, which is a pretty populous place. So it really was just kind of that quiet area where I knew I could do what I wanted to do, but also have the help that I needed. Now we're heading into my broadcast practicum class with Chris Lee. Who's gonna, who wants to direct on this Wednesday? Let's try it out. Who's the first? Who's number one? So that'd be you, then. that's easy. Right when you get into the broadcasting program as a freshman, you really do get that hands-on experience right away. They do put you in classes where you're learning how to use equipment, you're learning how to write. They really do want you to get that hands-on experience and not just sit in a classroom and look at the board. I'm also a student ambassador at West Liberty and today I'm giving a tour to a prospective student. I became an ambassador at West Liberty because I wanted to help students out the way West Liberty helped me out. This was my very first place that I toured, and I was supposed to tour five other schools, and I decided not to go to those tours because West Liberty really helped me out the very first time, and I knew that this was going to be the place that I wanted to spend my four years of college. 
today I'm directing Hilltopper Sports Weekly in the WLUTV studio. Having our own educational programming that goes out to over 100,000 homes on Channel 14 kind of gives the students more of a place to grow. They get to learn very quickly how to run a television show. We get to direct, we get to do a lot of different things that you wouldn't get to do at other schools this young. So tonight we have a doubleheader basketball game. We're about to go into the truck and get ready for the broadcast. So we have some of our student production crew members here. They're actually freshmen. We have Kelsey running Instant Replay, and we have Beth running Graphics tonight. We have Chad up here. Chad's our ultimate producer. And then we have our freelance director, Trent. He used to be a student here, and now he's gonna be directing our games tonight. So now we're gonna head up to the floating track and set up our tight camp. So we have our own production truck, which we use for our home and sometimes away football games. And then we also use it for basketball games here as well. It's a really nice, really nice facility for us to use. But being a part of the crew has taught me so much. It's honestly helped out with my classes. It's helped out with me being more confident in a lot of things that I've done here. It really teaches you to be out of your comfort zone because you are a part of live television. I'm sidelining for the game and I'm about to go talk to Coach Cooper and get his thoughts on it. I really had no expectations of myself coming into college, but the more that I was here and the longer I was here, the more I grew out. Not only am I on the student production crew and a student ambassador, but I'm also a resident assistant on campus now. So I'm pretty involved. In high school, Lauren would have never done any of this. She was the shyest person ever and she never wanted to do anything that involved people, but now I've kind of like branched out and it's really helped me out in so many ways. And you can tell by the score here that they want this game very bad. Where am I go? Thank you, Lauren. I hope this gave you a look at what it's like to be a broadcasting major at West Liberty. For more information, check out the website. teacher, a physician assistant, and a business leader. What do they have in common? They made their next move with a graduate degree from West Liberty University. Visit westliberty.edu slash grad to make your next move. Welcome back to the West Banco Arena. It is still halftime here. The toppers with a 43-29 lead over Wheeling Jesuits. In that first half, the toppers Shot 15 of 38 from the floor for 39%, 6 of 16 from behind the arc for 37%, and 7 of 14 from the line for 50%. A tough go shooting-wise for the toppers, uh, and it was pretty similar for Wheeling Jesuit. They shot 13 of 38, uh, 1 of 12 from behind the arc. That's where the problem lies for Wheeling Jesuit. They're shooting uh, similar shooting percentages. They shot the same amount of shots. The toppers just made two more, except... Six of them were three-pointers to Wheeling Jesuits, just one. Yeah, and there's the difference right there. And, you know, it's been a long time since West Liberty has shot 38% and a half and gone into the intermission up 14 points. Yeah. And that's going to be a problem for Wheeling Jesuit because we know the Hilltoppers are only going to improve upon that. Jesuit's going to have to pick up the pace. Some individual leaders here for both of these teams. Uh, it'll be Eric Moninger, the leading scorer for the Toppers, 12 points. Will Yoakum right behind him with 11. Yoakum leads the way and rebounds with 8. He's not too far away from a double-double. Almost had it in that first half for Wheeling Jesuit. Frank Camgain with 10 points, the lone double-digit scorer for the Cardinals. Uh, Steve Kennedy also with 8 points in that first half. Tariq Woody, 7 rebounds to lead the way in that category for Wheeling Jesuit. Emmanuel Ansong with 5 uh, nobody from uh, West Liberty had more than three after Will Yoakum's eight in terms of rebounds. 
Well, we've got about 20 seconds before halftime begins. It looks like it'll be the starting five out there for the toppers. They will get possession to start the second half for Wheeling Jesuits. It will also be their starting five back on the floor to start this second 20 minutes. And a crowd, large, large crowd getting back to their seats. And we can't mention that enough, just how tremendous it is to see this many people here at West Banco Arena in the first year that it hosts the Mountain East Conference Tournament. Yeah, it really is great to see the local support. And, uh, you know, the I'm, I'm not sure if this is correct or not, but the tournament move, was forced to move here this year because of the girls' high school event. Is, is, that, is that pretty much correct? I, I think that's part of it, yes. It, it would have been tough to hold both tournaments at the same time. However, I think the Mountain East has found a home here based on this support. The Toppers made their first bucket to make it 45-29. Then it was... Frank Camgain to the other end of the floor. Can't get the shot, but he is fouled by Eric Meininger. That'll be his first, team first, of the second half. I'm sorry, that'll be the second on Eric Meininger. Camgain gets the bucket, and it's 45-32. Yahill Hill almost gets the shot block, finds Dalton Bolden on the pass. Mining her for three, no good, long rebound out. They're going to say last touch by Wheeling Jesuits. And it'll be topper ball. But how many times have we said tonight, West Liberty hustle, offensive rebound, extra possession, and that's the case right there. Yahill Hill came out of nowhere to, to come, up with the, uh, come up with the possession for West Liberty. Toppers passing it around. Dyer will drive, take a step back, goes a baseline pass to Hill for three. It's good. 48-32, Toppers lead. Yeah, and oftentimes those extra possessions add up to three points like they did right there. Toppers still pressing. Almost get the steal, but Rodriguez crosses half court. Now they call a hand check foul on Dalton Bolin as Rodriguez crosses midcourt. Jay Gentry into the ball game for Rodriguez. That'll be the second team foul. Will also be the first foul on Boland. Cam Gain throws it into Tariq Woody. Now back to the half court for Steve Kennedy. Robinson looking back to Kennedy on the right side. Screen set. Lobbed inside for Woody, dishes it back over to Gentry underneath the bucket, looks for somewhere to go, finds Robinson, he drives, dishes it back out, tipped out of bounds by Will Yoakum. Possession stays with the Cardinals, four seconds to shoot. And you got to give credit to the West Liberty defense. A lot of rotations taking place right there, and Yoakum knocks the ball out of bounds. Gentry will throw this one in from the baseline. Again, just four seconds to shoot for the Cardinals. He gets it in quickly. Cam Game puts up the three. No good. Long rebound. Hill Hill picks it up. Dyer looking. Head up. Finds Hill. He's going to drive on Gentry. Lays it up with the right hand. No good. And the rebound ends up with DeAndre Robinson of Wheeling Jesuit. Kennedy uses his speed. Crosses half court. Pass almost stolen by Yoakum. Gentry will get fouled by Bolin. He picks up his second very quickly. Yeah, tough one there for Bolin. Got a little bit out of position. Gentry, who also has a nice body for a freshman, made him pay for it right there. And it'll be Wheeling's ball on the end line underneath their basket. Tariq Woody will grab a seat as Emmanuel Ansong, number 23, re-enters for Wheeling Jesuits. 18.04 left to play in this second half. Kennedy in the corner, takes the inbound pass, drives baseline, spins back out to Ansong. He gets it to Robinson on the right side. Three-point shot, no good. Long rebound. Kennedy picks it up. Inside pass to Cam Gain and the good bucket. And once again, a long rebound. That time benefiting Wheeling Jesuit. That one came out past the foul line. 48-34 is the score. Toppers with the lead. Hill on the right side. Drives baseline. No good. Tips it back. No good on that one either. Dyer comes up with the tall rebound. Back over into the corner for Hill. Another three-point attempt. It's good. 
51-34, Toppers lead. West Liberty making them pay with the extra possession. Great hustle by Dyer, hits an open hill. Kennedy takes the long over the shoulder pass to beat the press. We think Jesuit doing a good job of that. Finding all kinds of different ways to beat it. Gentry at the elbow, picks up the dribble, finds Robinson at the top of the key. Drifts to the left to Cam Game. He drives on Luke Dyer. Moniker comes in for help. No good on the shot. Boland gets the rebound. And Boland just took the ball away from Cam Game there. Showed his strength. Cam Game shown his frustrations a little bit with that. Boland driving. Can't get the lane. I believe Gentry may have gotten a hand on that. Will Yoakum picks up the loose ball. A new shot clock for the toppers. Drives, bobbles, back out to Hill in the corner. Three-point shot. Good again. Toppers lead by 20. 54-34. Timeout. Wheeling Jesuit. Topper Nation on their feet again. Boy, and Hill really heating up from the corner. He likes it down there. Will be a 30 second timeout for Jesuit, but they will stretch it into immediate timeout. We take the break. Again, Topper's 20 point lead with 16.36 left to play on the West Liberty Sports Network. AB Kia, the Valley's only total indoor showroom, is a proud sponsor of West Liberty Hilltopper Athletic Club. If it's cheering on the toppers or working to provide you with the best automotive shopping experience possible, AB strives to be number one. Open seven days a week. AB is the Valley's financing leader with the ability to say yes when other car dealers, banks, and credit unions have said no. Apply online at ABAutosales.com. It's quick and easy with an answer within the hour. AB, located directly off the Boggs Run Road exit in Benwood, West Virginia. I haven't done it before. Welcome back. 1636 left to play. The starting five out there for the toppers. And it looks like they're having fun playing basketball right now. Struggled a little bit early on, but now they seem to be in full force, and the toppers are really playing West Liberty basketball. Yeah, you are right. They did struggle early to score the ball, but the thing that I liked is they never panicked. You know, they hung in there. They kept their rotations. They basically have, have worn down Wheeling Jesuit with their offensive rebounding, and now the scary thing is they're starting to make shots. Yeah. It will be Wheeling Jesuit possession. DeAndre Robinson will throw this ball in. It's Robinson, Rodriguez, Kennedy, Cam Gain, and Ansong on the floor for the Cardinals. The toppers again, they're starting five. Jesuit will have to go the full length of the floor. Toppers pressing. Robinson, bounce pass to Rodriguez to beat the press. Now it's Ansong to the left side to Cam Gain. Robinson looking, hands it off to Kennedy. He gets into the paint, spins back around, finds Ansong, seven to shoot. Cam Gain thought about the straightaway three. He drives, shot is good, beating Dyer and Moninger. Yeah, really impressive move there by Cam Gain. He's able to finish up around the rim as well as he did right there. Dyer spins back around to Bolin. He drives, puts it up, no good. Don't know if Robinson got a piece of that inside pass. Everybody left Will Yoakum and Dyer found him. 56-36. And how many loose balls has Dyer come up with tonight? Now a steal from Will Yoakum on the press on the long pass. Finds Yehill Hill again in the corner. 59-36. Boy, Hill's really good at hiding that corner. Nobody can find him. Another steal for the toppers on the press. Moninger comes up with the loose ball. Dyer throws it off the foot of Rodriguez. Toppers get possession. You can hear Topper Nation loud and proud here in the West Banco Arena. The second five in for the Toppers. And the Hilltoppers really giving them a lot to cheer about. Playing great basketball, making shots, making each other better, and hustling like crazy. Primer on the inbound pass to Marlon Moore. His shot is blocked by Tariq Woody. Kennedy flying up the floor, finds Cam Gain. He drives. Shot is no good, tipped away. Brady Arnold comes up with it for the toppers, and Jay Gentry knocks this ball out of bounds and unfortunately hit our little stat runner, uh, 
poor young guy just got hit with the basketball. Hey, you got to be alert. You know, the basketball doesn't doesn't hold any preference there. There's no prejudice. You got to be alert at the score table. Well, he's a tough kid. He's standing in there. I think he plays hockey. The toppers with 15 minutes left to play in this ball game. Primer from Allen for three. Tyler Primer right in front of the topper bench, 62-36. And how quickly a game can turn. You know, it wasn't that long ago that the game was, you know, well within single digits. Wheeling Jesuit even held some leads in the first half. West Liberty's opened it up. Cam Gain with a nice drive and finish. He is also fouled by Evan French. He will get an and one opportunity. But with the stoppage in play, it'll be immediate timeout. When we return, Cam Gain will be shooting his and one opportunity. Toppers lead 62-38, 14-41 left to play. <laughs> Saving starts here. Belmont Savings Bank, focused on your future. Welcome back. 14:39 left to play in this ball game. The toppers a big lead. Taking a look again, we've talked about the crowd quite a bit here tonight, but also when you look around, I think every single team that is left in this conference tournament, either men's and women's side, are here to watch this game right now. I see Glenville State's women's team and West Liberty's women's team sitting just, uh, there's a section in between. Those two teams will play tomorrow at noon. That'll be here on the West Liberty Sports Network, an audio-only broadcast, myself and Kyle Patrick. But it is great to see, obviously, Concord and Charleston are here as well because they play after this ball game. So, obviously, they're going to be here. And Glenville State's women's team just got put up on the video board, and they're pretty excited about it. Yeah, you know, those young people can do that dance they call the floss, and they, and they, they can go back and forth side to side, and uh, us old guys, we can't do that. I don't even know what the floss is. I don't have I, I don't have an opportunity to sh uh, ask you to show us on air since it's an audio-only broadcast, but uh, it'll be Frank Camgain getting his and-one opportunity. No good. Rebounded by Marlon Moore. It stays 62-38. Brady Arnold sets up in the half court. Tyler Primer looking, finds more. Pass is bobbled, but Arnold picks it up. French for a quick three, no good, a little bit too long, and Steve Kennedy skies high to get the board. Yeah, I like the way Kennedy blocked out there as well. He left no doubt that was his. Brady Arnold at the other end saying, you want to jump high, so can I, little man. He gets up and blocks Jay Gentry's shot. And Brady left no doubt at this end. Great block by Brady. Battle of the smaller guys on the floor, both around 5'10 or so. Arnold trying to get another block on Steve Kennedy, but Kennedy able to get the nice bucket. It's kind of fun to watch these guys go back and forth, though. A lot of speed and skill between those two players. Moore trying to split a double team. The jumper no good on the runner. Nate Allen almost gets the rebound. And a foul will be called on Wheeling Jesuits. They call this on Steve Kennedy. And John Peckinpah wanted the technical foul, and he got it from the official. He said, give me one. And sure enough, he got a T in his direction. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he did say that. And uh, he was asking what the player did down there. But Nate was really just working hard. And he got bumped, and uh, and the foul was called, and now West Liberty will shoot two for the technical, and then they'll get the ball right back uh, at half court. Coach Peck and Paul picked up a technical foul up at West Liberty when these two teams played earlier this season. It'll be Evan French. Again, Evan's got one of the sweetest shots you'll ever see in West Liberty history. He's shooting two free throws, makes the first. Kennedy picked up his first foul, second team foul on Wheeling Jesuit this half. French makes both free throws. And now it'll be Nate Allen's turn to shoot for the personal foul. Yeah. 
Allen cannot make the first. The second attempt. In and out. Robinson gets the rebound for Wheeling Jesuit. 0 for 2 on that trip for Nate. Robinson to the right side for Jay Gentry, guarded by Marlon Moore, 13 against 13 there. And the pass from Ansong off the mark and into the West, or I'm sorry, Wheeling Jesuit bench. Turnover and West Liberty takes over. Yeah, it was a nice chess pass. Unfortunately, unfortunately it was right to Coach Peckinpah. And he didn't look too pleased uh, to be receiving that one. He has done such a tremendous job this season coming in in his first year. A lot of new players for Wheeling Jesuit and a lot of these young guys are going to be really good. Wheeling Jesuit may be back sooner than everybody thought. Arnold dishes it back to Moore. High shot. Almost hit the rafters here in the West Banco Arena. And a shot is good. 67 to 40. Toppers lead. Yeah, and just like we talked about before, before this half started, we knew West Liberty was going to shoot the ball better this half. And they live, they've lived up to their end of the bargain. Kennedy's drive, no good on the layup, but he gets the ball back after a mishandle by West Liberty. No good on that attempt either. And Moore gets the rebound quickly up to Primer. Can't get the finish with the left hand, but he is fouled by Robinson. That'll be his second, team third. And a nice look up the court right there, you know, to find Primer, who was uh, cherry picking a little bit. And uh, give him credit, though, he went up and drew the foul, and now he'll have two foul shots. You never cherry picked, did you, Todd? I wasn't fast enough to do that. <laughs> there was no way. Primer makes his first attempt. He is shooting 676.5% from the free throw line this year. Second one, no good. And song with the board for the Cardinals. Arnold pokes this ball away. Primer comes up with the steal on the press. Marlon Moore can't finish the dunk. Evan French, the offensive rebound and the putback. 30-point lead, 70-40 to 40 toppers. And the biggest lead of the night. But I, let me finish your thought there from a few minutes ago, Todd. You were talking about how Wheeling Jesuit has really brought in some nice players with Coach Peckinpah. And, and, you, and I concur. you got to give them credit for where they were. Not too long ago, one win, 13, 14 losses to being here in the quarterfinals of the Mountain East tournament. He's really done a tremendous job. Got to give him credit. Absolutely has. They were 2-17 and 17 at one point in the year. Then they reeled off seven wins in their last ten games. They even won their opening round game in the Mountain East Conference tournament against West Virginia Wesleyan. And just tremendously have you know, gotten better and better with every single game they've played this year. Yeah, and I would say I don't think there were any teams lining up wanting to play them in this tournament because they've come in really as hot as anybody. Ansong with a nice bucket in the lane. Ansong is another freshman. I mean, so many freshmen on this team. It's, you know, we talk about the toppers also being young. This is going to be a good rivalry. It continue to be one. Marlon Moore Another three-point shot makes it 76 to 42. Wow, and Marlon really brought it, brought down rain with that one. Like you said, going up toward the rafters and splashing down through the nets. Cam game with a nice baseline drive. Marlon Moore rips the ball out of his hands, but they're going to call the foul. This will go against Evan French. Will be his second, team sixth. Cam gained to shoot two. First one is good, makes it a 30 point ball game again, 73 43. And the topper starting five comes in. The second five gets a standing ovation from Topper Nation. Cam Gaines, second attempt, good as well. 73-44. Dyer to the left side to Bolin. He's looking. Finds Meininger, top of the key, back to the right to Yahil Hill. 
Bolin now, top of the key, three-point shot, no good. Meininger tries the tip, but they're going to call the foul on the floor against Wheeling Jesuits. That will be on DeAndre Robinson. It'll be his third, team fourth. And that brings a smile of frustration from Coach Peckinpah, but, you know, it's, it's really tough when, you know, West Liberty does not have the size, so you wouldn't think they would be a great rebounding team, but all of these guys look to rebound, and they've made Willing Jesuit pay all night long. Bolin puts up the shot, no good. Yoakum there for the putback, and that does go. I may have to correct myself on the score. It is now 75-44. to 44. May have looked up a little too soon on one of Marlon Moore's three-pointers. Well, I think that's that's probably the only trouble spot here for us is, is looking <laughs> up at the scoreboard because it's almost straight up in the air. It's not that easy for us guys. In fact, we could have strain next by the end uh, of this game. I absolutely will. You know, some of the chairs here, my back's hurt from some of these chairs already. So, we'll see. I think I just complained too much, honestly. They call the travel on Wheeling Jesuit. Toppers with possession again. Meininger back to Bolin. Three-pointers up. No good. Long rebound to Meininger. He puts it up. Off the glass and good. 77-44. And there we go again. You know, another offensive rebound. It is just, it's like a broken record. I know the young people out there don't know what we're talking about. But it's happening over and over and over. Finals are coming back. The Toppers got the steal on the press. You Hill Hill tried to get an alley-oop dunk to Will Yoakum as the two freshmen come together now and Kind of chuckle about the uh, missed pass there, but now Wheeling Jesuits' Frank Camgain comes down and is fouled. He will shoot two. How many years do you have to go by, go back to to understand the term broken record? <laughs> I mean, that's a long time ago. You know, I think I might be showing my age a little bit here. Camgain cannot make the front end. It looks like number 15, Zach Collins, will be coming in for Weaving Jesuit. Cam Gain makes his second. Collins is in for Cam Gain. 77-44. Toppers have the lead. And there are exactly 10 minutes remaining in this ballgame. Boninger from Dyer. Three-pointer, no good. And Song gets the rebound quickly up to Collins. Bolin on him. Behind the back dribble. Loses it to you, Hill Hill. He's going to push the pace. Takes it coast to coast and finishes with the right hand. 79-44. Well, Hill showed it all there. Speed, quickness, strength, and a nice touch to finish up around the rim. Hill Hill now with 16 points. Four of six from behind the arc for Hill tonight, the true freshman. Collins from the corner. No good on that three-point attempt. Bolin another rebound. Bodinger hands it off to Dyer. Finds Bolin. Pump fakes to straightaway three. Back to Meininger. Bounce pass to Hill. Baseline and good. 81-44. Hill 18 points leading all scorers. Great setup by Meininger, and boy, is Hill fluid down there. Finished with the left hand like it was nothing. Kennedy almost gets this ball stripped away by Dyer, but they call the foul on Dyer. With that stoppage, it looks like it's going to be immediate timeout. It will be. The second five is going to come back in for the toppers. Topper Nation on their feet again for West Liberty as this immediate timeout happens. 8.45 left to play. 81 to 45 is the score in favor of West Liberty. We'll be right back on the West Liberty Sports Network. At the Country Club Rehabilitation Campus, we provide a unique environment for your loved one to feel right at home. Our residents receive the freedom of living in an apartment or personalized private suite with the care of our skilled nursing staff. A positive, healthy life starts with a good meal. We offer a full menu with fresh home-cooked food. Our skilled team of therapists design a customized rehab plan to increase residents' independence and ability to manage daily life skills at home. Experience the difference at Country Club Rehabilitation. A 
Welcome back. Score is 81 to 45. 845 left to play in this ball game. It's all West Liberty now. And we take a look at some of the current trends in this ball game. Wheeling Jesuit, no field goals in the last three minutes, 16 seconds. It's been a tough one again. This is a good learning experience for this extremely young Wheeling Jesuit team. Yeah, and we knew at halftime that Wheeling Jesuit was really going to have to pick up the scoring pace if they were going to stay in this game because we knew West Liberty was going to shoot the ball better. Unfortunately for them, you know, they haven't been able to hold up their end of the bargain, and all of a sudden we're looking up at an 81-45 to 45 score. Yeah, it's that's going to be a tough one for the Jesuit fans, but again, I don't think it's going to be much longer that there will be games like this between these two schools. Next year, I don't believe uh, it'll be this big of a blowout at this point. Well, really, up until tonight, the games have been pretty competitive, uh, you know, especially last weekend at Wheeling Jesuit. Uh, but you can see the, uh, you know, sort of the, the, the spurt ability of West Liberty and how they're able to put together baskets quickly. And this is what happens when they do that, uh, a blowout right now. Coach Hallett likes to call them blackouts, where it just kind of West Liberty accumulates double-digit amount of points in a very short amount of time. Kennedy went one of two on his free throws, but after the second missed, ball went out of bounds off of West Liberty. We think Jesuit takes back possession, and Kennedy on the baseline drive and gets it. 81-48. West Liberty still with the big lead. Yeah, to give folks at home the... The, the, the proper perspective. Once upon a time, this score was around 27 to 27, and I believe West Liberty had one of those spurts to make it 37-27, and really they have not looked back ever since. And you look up right now, and they have really outscored Wheeling Jesuit about 60 to 20 ever since. It has been all West Liberty. Eight and a half minutes left to play. Primer. Baseline inbound pass to Arnold. Can he get the finish? No. The offensive rebound, though, the putback does not go, but he is fouled. He'll get two attempts at the free throw line. And last last night we saw Morgan Bruner, you know, Lindsley product, tie a Mountain East state tournament record with a fellow Wheeling player, Emily Piscarich. That's right. That's right. And she made eight, yep. eight three-pointers. I'm telling you tonight, I, I don't know the stats, but West Liberty has got to be close or maybe exceed a uh, uh, Mountain East record for offensive rebounds. I mean, they have really put on a clinic right here. Arnold can't get them to fall. Stay, it stays 81 to 48. A travel call on Wheeling Jesuit. You know, to, to follow up on that thought, as I look at our most recent stats, West Liberty has 22, that's what, that's what I said, 22 <laughs> offensive rebounds, and they have 46 total. That is an awful lot of offensive rebounds. We'll try to find that uh, stat for you. They're going to call a foul on Wheeling Jesuits. That will send Nate Allen to the line for West Liberty, both the teams are in the bonus now with 8.06 left to play. They call this foul on Gentry, his third. Allen misses the first. You know, and whether it's a, a record or not, it just shows the domination uh, and the determination of yeah. the West Liberty Quint out there on the court for getting the rebounds. Gentry, ball stripped away by Moore, quickly up to Nate Allen. He's got dunkability. He can't lay it in. Oh, he does get the lay in. Somehow this one bounces around the rim and falls in. He is also fouled and one coming up for Allen. Now that took some special touch because we've talked about how hard the rims are here. And they're almost like, you know, if you ever go to the carnival, if you ever go to Kennywood, and you see those little, those little rims, you almost have to, throw it up underhand to get the bounce. Well, he got the bounce right there. Really impressive. Cannot get the end. One long pass up to Tariq Woody. That one falls. 83-50 to 50 with 7.35 left to play. Allen into the paint again. No good. Woody the defensive rebound. Steal by Brady Arnold, and he gets the bucket. 
as Woody tried to get it to Kennedy. 85-50. And you know, Brady Arnold, we've seen him for four years. He's going to keep playing until the whistle blows, and uh, right there came up with a steal for a bucket. Now Nate Allen gets the steal. Seven minutes left to play, and it is all West Liberty. The step back three. Allen can't get it to fall. Looked pretty. Kennedy gets the rebound. This pass is stolen away by Arnold. He has time to Primer. Primer dunks it down. Well, I love the way, you know, Arnold could have went in and shot that layup himself. But I love the way he set up his teammate. Now, you know, you look at the bench, they're all up in the, and congratulating and so forth. That's really good team play. Topper Nation on their feet as well with that one. Kennedy, nice little move, dishes it off to Woody. Gentry with 10 to shoot, finds Cam Gain in the corner, three-pointer falls, 87-53. Evan French to Arnold. Now it's Marlon Moore. Spin. Finds Nate Allen for three. It's good. 90-53, Toppers lead. Yeah, Nate's starting to feel a little bit over there. Official timeout. I believe it is Emmanuel Ansong with maybe a little bit of blood on the uniform. They're going to make him come out. Brady Arnold, Nate Allen, and the two seniors coming off on the floor. Standing ovation from Topper Nation for them. In Keegan Saban, number 24, and Nick Greeley, number 14. Kennedy driving on Greeley. Nice pass over to Collins. It's good. And, you know, the thing to remember as well, Todd, is, you know, this is a tournament where you know, if West Liberty is going to win this thing, they've got to play three games in three days. And I, I really think their substitution pattern and their ability to go 10 deep, right now they're going 12 deep, you know, that should help them. That should be in their favor the longer this tournament goes on. Four finds Primer no good on the three. The only team that I can really think of in this conference that could really compare to West Liberty in terms of that depth is Fairmont State. There's some other teams that have, uh, you know, that can go eight, nine deep, maybe ten as well, but just the depth, the, the quality of that depth, Fairmont State might be the only team I could think of. Yeah, Fairmont will have their hands full tomorrow as they play, or, you know, as they play Notre Dame. Yep. That'll be a big-time matchup between uh, two really good programs. Another bucket there for the Toppers, 92-58. Cam Gain, deep three, no good, but an offensive rebound for Collins. Cam Gain pumps on Primer, drives, good. And one coming up for Frank Cam Gain. Going to call the foul on Tyler Primer. With that stoppage, it'll be immediate timeout. 4.35 left to play. 92-60 to 60 is the score. The Toppers have the lead. We will be right back for the final four minutes and 35 seconds of this ball game on the West Liberty Sports Network. Your business keeps you busy all day. You need to save time and money. Main Street understands, so we offer convenience, service, and advice. Maybe that's why we keep growing. We have business checking, the absolute lowest fees, and savings with higher interest rates. Locally owned with local decision makers. Built by the people for the people. We don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. Main Street Welcome back. The Toppers have four minutes and 35 seconds left before they pick up another Mountain East Conference tournament victory. The Toppers are tied for second in the all-time MEC tournament records. They are at 7-4 and four right now with this win tonight. They'll be 8-4. and four. They were tied with Charleston for second. And we think Jesuits led the conference tournament in record with not at nine and four after this one it will be nine and five and you know the toppers again have just played so well this year they got their ninth regular season conference tournament or conference championship in the last 10 years 
They're 119 and 13 all time in Mountain East Conference play. Fairmont State is second, 105 and 27. Pretty distant uh, in terms of that. West Liberty leads the nation in three point field goal percentage. They're the only Division II team ranked in the top 10 in three point percentage, field goal percentage, and free throw percentage. They've got the most wins and fewest losses of any D2 team over the past 10 years. They've got a 902 winning percentage in the last decade, 296 and 32. They've appeared in every NABC Top 25 since February 2nd, 2010. That's 143 consecutive poll appearances. That's a D2 record. And then the only Division II team averaging more than 100 points per game this year. They clinched their 11th scoring title in 14 seasons. All of those uh, little tidbits brought to you by Don Clegg. You know, amazing stats by, by Dawn, but really just awe-inspiring, amazing run for West Liberty. You know, this, folks, this is this is not that easy. You know, it's hard to win a basketball game. And, uh, and to string together 10 really glorious years like that, you know, it's really something to marvel at. West Liberty has averaged more than 30 wins in this past decade and they've never played more than 28 regular season games. It's, uh, <laughs> it's really saying something right there. You know, does that math even add up? Yeah, I mean, you know? it, it seems like it doesn't, but that's, that's the honest truth. Tyler Primer comes out. Nate Allen in. He gets a nice standing ovation. He is a topper senior. Nick Greeley unable to make the free throw here, but he's got three points so far tonight. The only topper that has played and not scored Keegan Saban, but I'm sure he will by the time this game is over. 93-61 is the score. The toppers have the lead. Make it 93-63 as we think Jesuit gets the bucket. But getting back to that math there, Todd, you know, that it really shows you how successful West Liberty has been in postseason. Yep. The, the the conference tournament, the regional tournament, and no matter how far they go in this particular event, they're going to be playing basketball next week in the regional tournament. Oh, yeah. Hopefully. You know, I don't know. IUP did win their opening round game, so I think that maybe solidifies their spot at number one in the regional tournament and hosting. But you never know. Maybe if the toppers can win this conference tournament and IUP loses at some point, that's the only uh, chance that West Liberty really has that may have already passed. Yeah, there's still some basketball left to be played, though. So who, you know, who knows what's going to happen? You know, the other possibility is IUP is also ranked first in the women's region. Oh, and they, or no, they, they lost. Uh, they lost two out of three to end their oh, regular my goodness. season. So it looks like Virginia Union is going to be hosting on the women's side. Oh, okay, I misspoke there. Yeah, the last time we were together, yeah, it's they been were, a while. They were of illness, but they were up there in both, and I was thinking, boy, they might have to. The NCAA might have to split uh, tournaments, but that's not going to be the case. That would have been nice because that would have given the toppers an opportunity to at least host part of the regional tournament, but that will no longer happen. Keegan Saban, there it is. Every single topper that has played has scored tonight a three-pointer. Makes it 96-65. to 65. That's got to be a good feeling. You wouldn't want to be the only guy in the locker room that, <laughs> that, didn't, get in the, that didn't get in the stat sheet. Cam Gain will be fouled on his shot attempt. Marlon Moore picks it up. And you know, the Toppers last year in their first round game against West Virginia State set a Mountain East Conference tournament record with 133 points. And what was funny about that is West Virginia State had set the record in the game that they played previous to get to play West Liberty. Uh, and then, sure enough, they give up that uh, even more than that the following game. So it's kind of funny how that stuff goes. But, uh, you know, West Liberty, 133 points last season in their first-round matchup. I don't believe they'll get to that point this year, 96 points with less than three minutes to play. But they will try to get to those triple digits. As usual, Collins now with the steal for Jesuits. Cannot get the finish, but he's fouled by Evan French. He will shoot two. 96-67 is the score. 2.45 left to play. Yeah, they're not going to hit any scoring marks tonight. 
but but really uh, an all-around great effort by the Hilltoppers, complete game. And I I can't think of one player on the roster that didn't play uh, to his potential tonight, and that's a good sign going forward for a team that plays so many players. Keegan Saban brings the ball up the floor, hands it off to Allen. He puts up the three. No good. April, the seven-footer, gets the rebound. Saban draw, picks up the foul as he bumps Duffy, number three, of Wheeling Jesuit. And Duffy's one of those fan favorites on the Wheeling Jesuit campus. We noticed that last weekend uh, during the game. They started him as a senior, and he contributed a little bit, and the, uh, as you can see the crowd got right behind him. He cannot get the first free throw. Frank Camgain comes out as in Jeremiah Brooks, number 31. Camgain gets a nice round of applause from the Wheeling Jesuit faithful. Cam Gain, 35 points in this ball game tonight. Yeah, he's going to be, he's already a good one, but he's really going to be a great player for Wheeling Jesuit. I would look for him to be on a number of all conference teams before he's done. Keegan Saban gets the bucket at the other end. 98 69, 210 left to play. Duffy, baseline, bounce pass. Shot is good for Jeremiah Brooks. Two minutes left to play. Saban goes to his right. He's going to be fouled by Brooks. Look a nice forearm shiver. Yeah, Jeremiah got his money's worth right there. <laughs> Set to come in for Wheeling Jesuit number 20, Josh, Josh Zandron, a six foot freshman from Shadyside, Ohio. And Josh played his high school ball for uh, Easy Ed Andes down there at Shadyside, a legendary coach who uh, has done a great job over the years. Saban makes his first free throw. Makes the second as well. Toppers, triple digits, 100 to 71. And we got to be careful. I'm, you know, Wheeling Central guy here. We're in my hometown, Wheeling, where I used to watch Wheeling Central play basketball in the early 90s. We keep talking about Morgan Bruner and Lindsley and now Shadyside, some of our big rivals. I don't, yeah, I don't want to. Are you getting a little jealous, I, Tom? I, I, I'm getting a little hot under the collar here. I don't. Uh, we got we to gotta start talking West Liberty stuff. I got you. I got you. Saving the step back three. No good on this one. Rebounded by Brooks. I'll, I'll give your alma mater a compliment. I mean, they, they have advanced, and they are uh, they're going down to Charleston for the state tournament, and not to leave, they're the number two seed. Good. good. So they have a chance to bring home uh, another banner for uh, your alma mater. Year, I'll be honest with you, I'm a bad fan because I haven't really paid attention much this year. I've been focused solely on West Liberty basketball. Greeley, the nice pass to save him, but he can't get the finish. Greeley with a wry smile coming down the floor. Under one minute left to play. Three-pointer from the corner, no good for Zandron. But it's an offensive rebound for April. Rodriguez playing in his last game, the senior. He drives, lays it in nicely with the left hand in what might be his last ever collegiate basket. Saban up the floor, about a seven-second difference between shot and game clock. Saban puts up the three, in and out. Zandron gets the rebound. 20 seconds left, shot clock is off, and Rodriguez has it for Wheeling Jesuit. Can he get one more shot in his career? I think he's going to do it. I think he should. Down to 10, Rodriguez drives baseline on Greeley, dishes it back out. Brooks, no good, rebounded by Keegan Saban, and time will run out. Topper Nation on their feet here at West Banco Arena as the Toppers get a big victory, 100 to 79, and they move on to the semifinals of the Mountain East Conference Tournament. They will play Saturday, March 9th, tomorrow at 6 p.m. They will wait and see who they will play coming up at 8.15 tonight 
Charleston takes on Concord. West Liberty will play the winner of that ball game. Uh, if you want to watch that one, which I highly suggest, that might be the most entertaining game of this entire tournament. Uh, that'll be on mountaineast.org. Go to Tournament Central. You'll be able to watch that game live online, the stream. It's going to be very exciting to watch. I'm sticking around to watch this game. I don't know if you are, EJ, but it's going to be fun. I'm going to be. I'm going to stay right here. If they let me, if they let us <laughs> stay right here, I'm going to stay right here courtside. And like you said, it will be a good one. And so far, the number one seed, West Liberty, has advanced. The two seed, Fairmont. The three seed, Notre Dame. And now we have the four and the five. So everybody holding serve so far. And let's see what happens in the nightcap. And that four and five, they're kind of interchangeable. Whether it's Charleston or Concord, they're pretty evenly matched. It's going to be fun to watch. Again, we take a look at some of the stats to end the ball game. Leading score for the toppers, Jahil Hill, 18 points, three rebounds. Will Yoakum, 15 points, 10 rebounds, the double-double, leading the way in the rebound category. And for Wheeling Jesuit, Frank Camgain, 35 points, four rebounds, 12 of 21, just two three-pointers as well, but 35 points, a great game for the freshman camp game. Yeah, he's, he's going to be a good one, that's for sure. And as we as we, as we look out onto the court, uh, Concord has come up to warm up, and they've got a guy that can score a bunch of points as well, one of your favorites, Tommy Bolte. This is going to be fun to watch. I'm not going to lie to you. I hope Charleston wins just so we don't have to play Tommy Bolte again. But <laughs> neither game will be easy, regardless of who wins this game between Concord and Charleston. It's going to be a tough one. For the toppers, tomorrow at 6 p.m., the men will play again here at West Banco Arena. We will bring you an audio-only broadcast if you cannot make it to West Banco Arena yourself. And also, tomorrow at noon, the women play against the number one seeded Glenville State, the number 18 in the nation. But the Lady Toppers, if anybody can beat Glenville State on the women's side, it's West Liberty. And that will be tomorrow at noon. Kyle Patrick and myself will bring you an audio-only broadcast of that ball game. EJ, your final thoughts on the game tonight? Oh, my thought is this. You know, West Banco has been a great host for this tournament so far. All the people have come out. I think half of Wheeling's here. <laughs> and uh, the facility looks great. The optics are there. And uh, hopefully it's here to stay in Wheeling. That would be tremendous if it would stay here in Wheeling. Again, tomorrow on the West Liberty Sports Network at noon, the women take on the number one seed, Glenville State Lady Pioneers. And at 6 the men take on the winner of Concord and Charleston coming up next on the mountaineast.org website. You can watch that video live. Well, for EJ Shodzinski and Teresa Gretchen back in master control, who made sure we get on air, on the air tonight, thank you very much, and we will see you tomorrow on the West Liberty Sports Network. What we're going to be doing and we're in the process of raising funds for now is called a Feed the Funnel Party. And I'm really excited about this program. We, are, we have $3,000 towards our $5,000 goal. And with $5,000, we can pack 20,000 meals for here in our community. All of those meals will go where we choose to, directly in Marshall County and our surrounding areas. Um, how do you gather donations for the canned food drive? For the canned food drive, we send information out to the different AOCs here at John Marshall. Um, also at, at Glendale Elementary, uh, the, the grade levels would, would acquire canned food and put them together. Um, we do a contest. Whoever has the most canned foods in the, the, the AOC or here at John Marshall gets a quality bakery breakfast one morning. Kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> well, it doesn't defeat the purpose. They, they get a sweet treat, but at the same time, they're still giving back to their community. Hmm. Little incentive. Um, the club is called Drug Free Club, but there are uh, is I'm sorry. You're fine. The the club is called the Drug Free Club, but is one of the most charitable organizations in John Marshall. But what other acts of kindness does your club do? Okay, so I, I mentioned the FRN Can Food Drive, and I've mentioned now the Funnel Party. Uh, one of the other aspects with our collaboration with Glendale Elementary, we hold their trunk or treat every year. We've done it for the last two years. We provide volunteers. Um, I've written a grant through YSS and the year before last that provided monies to provide different supplemental aids to Glendale Elementary uh, to, to promote a drug-free lifestyle with, with the youth. Um, 
our elementary kids really look up to our members and our high school students. And so we have our high school students, our members, at these events like Trunk or Treat. Um, another is their field day at the end of the year. One time we did a PBIS reward where our drug-free members come, they talk to the students, they interact with the students the entire school day. And it seems to be a very positive message while you're there. Well, that's very nice to hear. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. So <laughs> thank you very much for your time, Erin. Thank you for having me. And thank you for your work with the Drug Free Club. Uh, coming up next, we'll tell you more about how you can advertise your company with Track and Field. Sometimes, one moment changes everything. One song. One game, one adventure, one mission for a child battling a critical illness. A wish come true can be a turning point. You can transform lives one wish at a time. Visit Make-A-Wish online to help grant more life-changing wishes. We've got more news now on WJMH Reports. I'm Ethan Cameron. John Marshall's high school track and field program is introducing a new fundraiser that can help advertise your company. There will be multiple levels of the fundraiser with the top three guaranteeing, guaranteeing five years of advertising. Bronze level is the lowest that gives you five hurdles and year of ads for $250. Silver level offers 10 hurdles five years of ads, and a small banner for $500. Gold level gives you 20 hurdles, five years of ads, and a medium banner for $1,000. And finally, the platinum level includes 30 hurdles, five years of ads, and a banner, a large banner, for $1,500. For more information, you can call JM Athletic Director Robert Shavanek at 304-843-4444. Or you can send an email to rshavanek at k12.wv.us. Again, for more information, you can call JM Athletic Director Robert Shavanek at 304-843-4444. Or you can send an email to rshavanek at k12.wv.us.